Good afternoon to all our audience members and welcome to our seasoned guest speaker, Mr. Tatora Moko, a 2019 Mandela Washington Fellow. Uh, Mr. Ramoko is also a computer software engineer and entrepreneur. Um, he leads a team of designers and engineers based in Lesotho, building various solutions from a mobile POS and banking solutions for SMEs, a cooked meal marketplace called Lunchbox LS, and a rental housing marketplace move in. In addition to data science, Mr. Ramoko is skilled in design thinking, business development, and possesses strong analytical skills. Welcome, sir. And thank you for always being responsive to engaging our American Corner audience. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for having me. All right, let's <laughs> get to it then. Um, this is my first question. Why mm -hmm. technology? Um, where did your passion for innovation come from? And who mm. has been some of your biggest influences? And can you also tell us about the initiatives or contests you have been a part of? Mm. Um, well, basically my, my, my passion for technology started uh, at a young age. Am I allowed to speak both languages or should I just stick with one? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, okay. Feel free. Just, <laughs> all right. Yes, ma'am. So yeah, it started at a young age, uh, primary school. I think, uh, yeah, I think the first time I saw a computer, uh, a computer, the first time I saw a computer was when my dad brought a, and I said it's a peace call, like the peace call. Mm -hmm. So he brought home a small mm -hmm. Macintosh, black and white. I remember back in the day, it was a small Macintosh, black and white very fascinated about this device in a TV. So I'm just like, what is this, you know? So yeah. that was my first exposure to, to computers um, or to a computer. And then of course, Harale, Harale Primary, um, then the school introduced IT to, you know, to, to, to the school. And for me, because I had already seen a computer, I was just like, ah, here's one of those things that I saw at home. And then for me, it was just easy for me to get into it. And then of course, I my fascination um, sort of helped me excel in, in computer studies. Um, and then I just became good at it. And then we went to high school. When we got to high school, mm -hmm. computer literacy was there. And I was like, oh, computer literacy, I, I, I know computers, I've done this before. So I also excelled in it. Mm -hmm. And then I think in grade 10, when they introduced programming at uh, at high school, Nikena School of Polarasmus High School, Lima Nini Senegali. So they introduced right. programming, and I don't know. I, I took programming. I, I remember it was a bit of a challenge or not. Do I continue with programming or do I go with computer applications technology? But I chose programming, mm -hmm. and ever since then, I fell in love with it. You know, the ability to write That's software awesome. through lines of code. Yes. So mm -hmm. that was my passion for technology. My passion for innovation, uh, for innovation, however, started in university. You know, where I think I'm a creative person. I just like solving problems and doing things. So I don't know. I just had an idea where you know what um, I want to develop an app. Back in the day, I mean that app uh, was called Touchpoint. I wanted to develop an app called Touchpoint. Uh, which is basically just a, a platform where I could communicate with, with businesses. Like if I wanted to communicate with a business and just ask something, anything, I should be able mm -hmm. just to go on my one app, have all these businesses in one app, and then I just click on a chat button and then I can ask questions. So, okay. what movies are they showing <laughs> in the next coming week? Like the yeah. whole reason behind Touchpoint was just like, cause it was just annoying. Like, ah, what's playing this? I didn't know what's playing this week. So I wanted a very mm -hmm. simple platform where I could access taking a call and then just figure out, you know, what, um, yeah, what movies played next. And mm -hmm. then I remember having this idea and then I went to my then uh, university professor and that impasse, he was a, now you're a professor, but lecture. Hey, I'm a promoter. So now I would, um, <laughs> Uh, network engineering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, mobile network engineering. So I told him, I have this idea. I want to build this app. That 
allow me to do this, this, this. And it was like, ah, it's, a, it's a good idea, go for it. And mm. all I needed was, was just someone to say, go for it. And then I went mm. for it. Uh, and it's like, like I, mm, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. So then I graduated and now I'm on the outside, you know. And it was easy to talk about building an app then because Nagila University, I had access to the internet, I had access to that computer lab. Now mm. I'm by myself at home, no, no Wi-Fi. And it's like, no, no, no. Like, I An think internet is expensive. Internet is expensive. Yeah. My laptop is really, also the specs are, at, at the time, my laptop is not the best. Mm. You're trying to download Android Studio. Android Studio is about my two gig. So you're trying to download mm-hmm. a two gig software with, you know, got data, how for mm-hmm. my, my laptop has only 500 megabytes, like small yeah. little problems <laughs> that just get in the way. You're just like, yeah. Ah. But so I remember feeling, yeah, 100% because they're, they're blockers, you're not going to go yeah. away. A clog can cause something in, in a pipe system. If my now your whole fl- house is flooded. Just because of yeah. one small one little, little thing. small thing, yeah, hundred percent. And who has um, been? Oh, uh, Larry, your professor or lecturer was uh, one of your biggest influences, and your dad. Uh, no, no. Well, my dad introduced me to computers. My yeah. professor, I told my so every time I have an idea, I tell it to someone because it's like a sounding board. So I told it to him, and he was like, "It's a good idea. Go for it." And mm-hmm. I don't know, anytime somebody says it's a good idea, go for it. I take that as feedback and, and mm-hmm. I act upon it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then in the, in the process of going for it, there's those challenges. Mm-hmm. So, and then the Innovation Park was announced. Oh, oh no, Vodacom mm-hmm. is launching an Innovation Park. And I was like, yes, you know, because mm-hmm. for me, the Innovation Park was limited internet. I need that. 100%. Yeah. Um, state of the art, you know, computers. Because how can I, you know, I didn't make, I didn't have a Mac. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I was like, man, I need this. You know, three, mm-hmm. they also provide uh, mentorship. I'm like, oh, yes, I have an idea, but I don't know how to build a business around it. So if it comes with mm-hmm. business mm-hmm. mentorship, 100%, I'm, I'm, I'm going for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also promise of funding. I'm like, mm-hmm. bruh. This is this like, is like the full, the like the complete solution. All right. Yeah. I literally felt like this this place was built just for me, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I obviously I applied. I remember filling in the application form, touch point, da, 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 da. ah, that's so tower, and I got rejected. But uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a good idea. But yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mm. I remember. Montana in interview and Elon Paul Brown at the time. I remember I was yeah. on a call with him, Paul Brown, telling him about this idea. And then we were also on call with the then MD, I think. And yeah, yeah. they were just not they were just not convinced Even, that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe the skills are there, but the idea is the idea, so yeah. Crazy. All right. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. okay, cool. Um mm-hmm. I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll wait until next year so the first cohort can go and I'll wait and then brush up on my ideas and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was my first introduction to the Vodacom Innovation Park. And I think that was 20, it was now, when was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, Hanagi Mest, can you tell us a little bit about that? I, I know oh, you. Oh, Mest. So yeah, in 2019, I went to this program called Mest. It's a one-year uh, training program based in Accra, Ghana. So they mm-hmm. teach to they teach um, uh, uh, software entrepreneurship. So MEST stands okay. for Meltwater Entrepreneurial School of Technology, right? Mm-hmm. So basically, you're taught how to build software-based businesses. All That's right. it. Okay. Right. So what they do is they opened up um, applications so they could recruit from all over Africa, right? Mm-hmm. So everyone can apply. So we apply and then they pick, I think they pick about 60, 60 students or 60 applicants, or they pick 60 people. So mm-hmm. from that 60, they give you one year. So in that one year from those 60 people, uh, 
you know, you form teams. Okay. And then after you form teams, so they train you. While they train you, you form teams. And then in those teams, you build, basically you just solve problems. You build solutions right. for them. Problems. That's really cool. So you must have let, yes. like met a lot of people from, I mean, all across Africa. That must have oh, been yes. an amazing oh, experience. Yes. That's I really met cool. brilliant individuals from Nigeria, from Ghana, from mm. Cameroon, from South Africa, from Kenya, Mali, mm-hmm. um, uh, Ivory Coast, DRC, Botswana. Mm-hmm. I remember we had someone from Botswana there as well. It was literally just a melting pot of brilliant African um, talent. Nice. So interesting question. What would you say is the state of technology and innovation in Lesotho? Let's start with maybe mm-hmm. what are some of the um, greatest developments? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, in my observation, I'm sure there's a whole lot going on that I'm unaware of, but mm-hmm. what I've seen uh, is that we're at an infancy stage, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're also growing. I've been, when I look in the market, I see a whole lot of products that are coming out of the market. I mean, Mm -hmm. we have a music box, you know, developed by Enigma. So if you're an artist, you have a song, you upload it on music box. And for music lovers, you just go to music box and download local music. And Kore, it's our very own iTunes, you know, (laughs) it's a very, very great platform. I love it. I love it so much. And Enigma is really doing a whole uh, great work. Then we also have City Bang, you know, City Bang, you post a job, you get job opportunities there. So people find job opportunities in City Bang. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's one of the largest, you know, online platform in the country. But like traffic and yeah, City Bang is, is, is doing pretty well. Mm-hmm. And, and then of course, in the FinTech space, we have uh, CPA from Chaperone, I mean, mm-hmm. You know, we also have, I think, is it Smartel Money? Yeah, so in the, in, um, in the fintech spaces, we have Smartel Money and, and, and CPay, um, mm-hmm. which are basically just payment solutions. And so we're beginning to see new products come into the market. And, and for me, I'm, I'm excited. It means mm-hmm. enge- engineers are getting jobs. It means people are getting jobs. And it means, um, you know, like the software industry is not dominated by international players. Because... yeah. And Mbesa just came a company <laughs> of its own. On its own. So on that's its a own. huge development, right? How whole. It, it really shows you that there's, um, there's a very tight relationship between technology and, and, and the finance in the finance space. And mm. um, I think <laughs> mm. I mean, So what do we need more of? Like, so there's there's kind of like these isolated companies that are doing great work, right? Um, But I think what I see kind of lacking is like collective spaces where people can, you know, there's incubation hubs in a lot of different countries. And you mentioned the Vodacom Innovation Park as as one that, you know, used to operate Lesotho Munana and that was quite good with getting, you know, people to talk about technology and to build, you know, solutions. So Mm. what, like, aside from, you know, these isolated companies that are creating technological, you know, solutions, what, what do we need in terms of just getting people involved in, in technology. I know GEM Institute um, has programs for women, specifically for young women in media and technology, Koda, Bayadi, you know, in rural parts of the country, and they teach high school students how to code, Basabedi Sasketch. And I know there's um, Girls Coding Academy as well, um, who offers, you know, coding lessons to young women, I think. Eh? because it's <clears throat> Girls Coding Academy, yeah. So what, like how, yeah, what do we need more of? We need more collaborations. Uh, I think, you know, uh, like you're saying, things are happening, but everybody, mm-hmm. things are just happening in isolation uh, because organically, you know, we live in an information world. So information, you know, opportunity who you implement the Bumung Baro it's, it's okay, but we need to mm. be more intentional about um, what is happening. 
We need to be more intentional right. about building the digital economy and saying, okay, this is happening, right? How do we how do we come together as the digital community? As as prof, like we just need to come together and literally have more and more of of these conversations. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, clearly we need more spaces. Uh, definitely, we yeah. need more spaces where. Um, where people can meet and just come up with ideas, test out ideas, and yeah. an idea that works gets funding so that it becomes a real product. Because I can yeah. promise you, there's so many projects that are that die, you know, or that rather they don't even die. Like these are already laptop on Zaba to fail. You know, people have so many prototypes, so many ideas, mm -hmm. but they're just those ideas are stuck in PowerPoint format. They're stuck in. Yeah it's an app on your local machine so we need first and foremost we need to have a platform where people can sh uh, pitch this idea you know and say i have this idea i have this idea which i think thud was doing i think thud was a very good platform where people can come and say i have an idea it's an app that does this it's an app that does this. someone in the mm -hmm. crowd you know would be able to say oh this is a very good app all it needs is one two one two three and then we you know we just move it forward further because uh, yeah, i know before we closed for covid we had a group of students um from limpong wing and they were building a kitlara king and the whole i don't know how to explain it in english and whenever somebody said the adueno set which is mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i i don't know all the technicalities but for us it was yeah. like something we always had in the space mm -hmm. but you know, we didn't really know what can we do with it. And then they came and they're mm. like, no, this is what we can do. We can actually create, you know, this thing. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, amazing. And then we chose for COVID and that was that. Um, mm. So mm. can you also maybe when we're talking about inno in innovation hubs, can you tell us a little mm. bit about your experiences with Yali? And mm. with, because in as much as it's a, it's a leadership innovation hub, so it's mm -hmm. not, hey, come code, you know, it's, you know, mm. there's no or stuff like that but can you tell us a little bit of how about how that contributed in your journey uh yeah so 2019 i went to northwestern university um which is a good university it's like <laughs> when I, I was there and i was like uh can't i just get a scholarship and stay here <laughs> yeah you know, very good university yeah. and uh man so we were taught a whole lot of you know, business principles or business, um, yeah, should I call them principles? Yeah, you know, that works. That, that just basically, you will like get a, because you know, you, you, exposure is a very big thing because you, you're only exposed to problems. I mean, you can only come up with solutions to problems that you're exposed to, you mm. know. So mm. if you're exposed to the same kind of problem, you know, then you're always thinking of how, for instance, I uh, have a problem with unemployment. Everybody's like, how do we solve unemployment? How do we solve unemployment? Like it's, it's, it's a problem that is constant in our minds. But if yeah. you go to a different place and then you see um, sanitation is a problem or lack of water is a problem, then you start thinking that way. So me being there, you realize oh, man, there's other problems that people are talking about. Pe problems of how do we automate this how do we, i'm just like man people are thinking about such problems you know yeah it's, it's interesting. But, and building uh, solutions for them as well like yes yeah. and then what they also did the yali program like they took us to different innovation hubs right like nice it's literally just spaces where people come together and then they build stuff and then you know periodically they invite investors to come and see what the incub you know, like the people that are incubated are working on it and into mm. you know, fairly, yeah, just give innovators resources to innovate and then give them platforms to showcase their innovations. Because that's another mm. thing, like people have ideas, but don't know whom to what tell. Next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. When you have an idea, the first thing is share it. You know, but of course, mm -hmm. you don't know if I share it, then someone's gonna steal my idea. But an idea is a solution to a problem. Right? We're not mm -hmm. saying share your break down your concept, how you're gonna no, just say, um, yeah, there's a gap in this market, and chances are 
people already know there's a gap in that market, but you know, what's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. now? How will you build? You know, what pro- uh, product would you build, and how will you go into that market? How will you build trust with, with mm-hmm. your customers? Because that's the first thing you can build a product, but if people don't trust you, no one is gonna buy from that product. Yeah. You which know, is another but, thing that I actually noticed with a, like computer software engineers is that mm-hmm. it's this community of like these really smart people <laughs> that are solving all these problems. But the other thing yeah. that I noticed was that there needed to be an, an sort of like <sighs> an integration or some sort of interaction between people in business um, and people that can actually develop products because then you build this amazing app and then now you need the business acumen to actually market it properly. No. Um, you need to sell it to the consumer and you have to do so consistently while mm. the developers focus on the actual, you know, technicalities of the app or the platform. The How have you navigated around those relationships? Um, yeah, so I think um, in the past for me, um, because I'm an engineer, like my, my, my skill set is engineering. So my business side wasn't that strong. Uh, mm. So when we started, I started out with, with, with a few of my, my friends. So it's like one of snap, the team that we've built is mostly technical people. There's no one <laughs> yeah. business. And that's when mm. the innovation park, like through the innovation park, that's when we realized the configuration of the team was, was very mm. technical. No one was business. And then that's mm. when I decided because we have a redundancy of skills, let me mm. upskill myself on the business side. Like, let me learn okay. what is a business model canvas, what is a, uh, you know, customer development, you know, customer discovery. Let me learn about design thinking. You know, yeah. Design thinking, all of those non technical stuff. And I spent a whole lot of time building that side. Um, that even my engineering was now becoming, you know, I'm just like, because, you know, Technology is evolving every single day. The other part, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so mm. it is definitely a challenge. Um, I mean, if you look at most most startups, yeah, they're usually co-founded by two co-founders. One who's a very technical co-founder and then one who's a business. the pain points that your customers have you know do you really fully understand who your customer is do you fully understand who your user is right but oh am i still on looks like um (laughs) we have lost the host this is interesting um so yeah uh, i i think there needs to be a very good relationship between uh technical co-founders and, and, and business co-founders. I'm just gonna continue as if nothing happened, um, but now I'm giving it away because I'm telling you that I'm continuing as if nothing happened and yet something happened. But, um, hello, we lost you there for a moment. You're, Sorry, you're not unmuted. I think the Wi-Fi went off. Was yours also acting funny or was it mine? Anyway, it doesn't matter. No, it was- it was just you and, and I became the host for a second and I was just... Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, we were talking about, you were talking about um, how a lot of um, tech companies have the business person and then they also have, I think Facebook is an example. Apple is also an example to a point where the business people are mistaken for being the developers, <laughs> right? <sighs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's also... Uh, uh, there's this incubator in the United States called Y, y Combinator. I think mm-hmm. if, if, if we follow the Y Combinator model, it's a very interesting, it's an incubation program, one of the biggest in the, in, I'll probably say one of the biggest in the world because the companies that come out of Y Combinator are just, are just brilliant, you know. Mm-hmm. So 
So I think that is a, a model that works. Uh, we can just learn from Y Combinator on how to form teams, teams mm. that are gonna build successful startups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so, so there's innovation, right? So I could mm -hmm. come up with an idea, say, for clothing, like I particularly like e-commerce, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, the design thinking element of innovation, right? Mm -hmm. What would you say the country is still lacking in terms of bringing up innov innovative solutions that solve the social economic challenges in Lesotho? By country, what are you referring to? The government or the people? Both, both. <laughs> however way you look at it, if, if, there's a, if there's a lack in our attitude as the public, then that's an important thing, right? If the government is lacking, then that's also maybe something worth noting. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that innovation is about problem solving, right? So if mm. you identify problems, uh, yeah, identify problems after you identified problems identify the stakeholders like who's experiencing these problems and then you mm. go to the people experiencing those problems and say you know how would you like to how would you like us to solve this problem you know because that's another thing other people don't interview customers you know they just see a problem develop a solution take the solution and the customers Without. are like no this is not what I want and then you're thinking you yeah. know you spent the yeah. whole time so go go down ask the people what is the problem? What do you think? Collect your insights, collect your data, go to the lab, build, go back, give them, you know, uh, a sample. Is this what you want? Yes, this is what we want. We're willing to buy it. Go back to the lab, perfect it and roll it out, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So so what we need to do, of course, is, um, um, yeah, it's very difficult. How a country, you know, becomes very big, um, but, Mm. In, in any case, as as people that are custodians of innovation, whether they work in the public sector or work in the private yeah. sector, the first thing that they need to do is to engage the end users. Mm. For instance, let's say uh, one of the best uh, public space, I mean, public organizations, do I call it a public organization or parastata that I like that is very innovative is LRA. Like LRA is yeah. doing the most, like, and I just do the most like yeah um, mm -hmm. they have a nice queuing system there you just displays there and, and you know so um mm -hmm. and then they have a feedback you know system where you can actually give feedback on how your services were yeah so i think the lra model is, is, is really imagine if you can have such systems even in other you know, yeah, yeah. everything else if we can just digitize um the, you know, processes. Just digitize the processes and that's not even innovation that's just like basic <laughs> yeah like digitizing it's not even innovation it's just changing migrating from manual to digital yeah because you know? i think um, it's so shocking how like even for for companies that are progressive like we still mm -hmm. use paper, you know, we still keep records on paper instead of mm -hmm. using, you know, digital filing systems. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's so slow, but I think mm -hmm. having these conversations like more, mm -hmm. you had a webinar on autom optimization, automation. Auto yeah, yeah. Was it automation, automation, yes. Yeah, yes. which I think yeah. is such an important conversation now for mm -hmm. any entity really, whether it's a public, you know, entity or, or if private. it's a private entity, we mm. need to be developing systems that provide services to people faster, that are more efficient. There's no reason why at the end of the month, people should be queuing, you know, mm. or anywhere else really. Mm. And I think from our conversation now, uh, mm. we've Deter I've determined that uh, um, a lot of the innovation is happening in like financial ish sectors, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, in areas that deal with money, which is not a bad thing, right? But there's mm -hmm. such a great opportunity for like innovation in the health sector, right? What are some of the, the, the issues that the public has in, in healthcare service? Mm -hmm. Who, who, 
how many mm-hmm. doctors are, you know how many doctors are available in in in, in certain areas there's the clinic the line di telele how do we solve some of those problems because i think technology and innovation is going to be a solution to mm-hmm. these problems because they've tried other means and obviously mm-hmm. has not worked because we still mm-hmm. are experiencing the same same issues so i think mm-hmm. that even though finance is a fascinating you know area business is a mm-hmm. fascinating area there's there's so much opportunity in in creating innovative solutions for mm-hmm. you know healthcare for example and other areas mm-hmm. where people are are mostly you know affected mm-hmm. um so on in in that context what would you perceive might boom might be you know what which industries do you see as like mm-hmm. the perfect industries to 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 be conducive for innovation in the technology mm-hmm. i think yeah finance is is the first industry uh, because at the end of the day innovation is driven by by profit you know yeah. where do you stand to make the most profit and mm. um the financial industry is, is interesting in a sense yeah right? i mean every every like the financial industry every industry you know is built on the finance industry like mm, mm. money is in everything it touches everywhere so mm. how do we simplify access to financial services how do we simplify uh, compliance how do we like basically how we do we to simplify the whole industry and the finance sector and technology just simplifies the financial sector and mm. um would you mass simplification it, it 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 reduces costs and increases revenue exponentially so the financial mm. sector is literally a very attractive um is the financial sector is a very attractive space especially for investors like if you look at the amount of investment that is going into fintech not just i mean in um in africa like mm. investors mm. are just pumping money into into fintech and then camera mm. fintech is as agriculture so the two spaces that are really very very big um as fintech and then the mm, agricultural space like agritech is uh, or agrotech is a very is a very big thing um mm. and then kholale ever um, to mention top 3 but now i'm talking at i'm talking at context the africa is very difficult to isolate yeah 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 see Cuz also yeah. we're very small. <laughs> you can't really build yeah. a product that you can only market no. to like a million people and then not all those 2 million people are going to be your target market. So when you yes. talk about innovation in Lesotho, you really have to be thinking in broader terms. It's like if you yes. own an e-commerce store, like you can't be thinking okay, it looks like e rekisa tsa batho ba Lesotho fela because if it's say for 25 year olds to 35 year olds, then mm. Two million, you know, so it reduces by how you know what percentage. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I I I I mm-hmm. understand that. Can you also maybe tell us a little bit about your product? Ewe, it's only the SME. I think um, it was a financial, like a financial. Oh oh, oh oh oh. So so yes, in t- I think it was in 2019 as well. Um, UNDP had this hackathon. Yeah, the financial inclusion hackathon. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of developers attended, and then they literally had like categories um, where we can innovate, you know, in. Mm-hmm. And then we decided to focus on the payments, and we, I mean, we saw a very big opportunity in uh, in the transportation sector. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, mobile money is doing very well in other sectors, but when you look at the transportation sector mobile money is is, is is absent so we decided you know what we we want we want to target that space you know mm. and so for us as innovators you, you you sort of put the social you put other problems last and you just focus on the mm. problem you mm. know and but of course the reality is gonna go out of manner the problem is really not a it's not technical but the problem is is cultural and some mm. solutions yeah you know when you build a solution and you take it to the customers and the customers like no we like the situation as is the way it is <laughs> the way it is and then you're like what you know so that was mm-hmm. a very interesting insight yeah, okay then how do we i mean if you see a gap in the market you know but the end users mm-hmm. don't want to change you know then mm-hmm. you need to 
you need to be innovative in how you communicate your product and how you sell your product and how you convert people, you know, for customers mm. to come on board. And, mm. and, and yeah, like, um, yeah, the taxi industry is a big market and, and I'm definitely thinking it's, it's going to be a race. It's, it's already a race. The question is who's going to get to that market first, who's exactly. going to onboard, you know, uh, the entire public, uh, yeah, the, the entire transportation industry. I mean, um, another challenge when we're doing research, it's very difficult to estimate the the market value of that industry. But in in my um, in my estimation, with literally, I'm just taking a number. For, like I did like very basic calculations mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. real proof. But I, I I think there's about two billion um maluti just going annually the interface this is two billion moving there and if you can build a very good solution and tap into that market mm. you know there's a whole lot of money and the benefits even the social benefits are, are, are will be big one small businesses will be small businesses in that sector will begin to track their um their what's Basically, check the finances. People will be able to pay digitally mm -hmm. and COVID nineteen, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah. And, and and another thing, I mean, here I am sharing an opportunity. It's an opportunity, and I'm sharing. You know, people are like, "Bro, why are you so At the end of the day, I'm just like, it's a problem that we have as a nation, and yeah, and that needs to be solved. Yeah, like, and I'm part of the race, and the race is yeah. nice when people are in there. So. It's mm. going to be interesting to see who's going to onboard the taxi industry. Will it be C Pay? Will it be uh, M Pesa? Will it be Eco Cash? Will it be a mm -hmm. new person coming out of the blue? At the end of the day, is uh, who will successfully build trust with the taxi industry, so uh, taxi association, and the mm. commuters, so that both parties are able, I mean, feel comfortable enough to say, "Akpala ma taxi," just whip up my phone and pay. You know, it could mm. be us. I hope it's us. I mean, I hope it's Technify. It will be interesting yeah. to have Technify the entire transport industry. And, and and that's what we're gunning for, actually. And mm. yeah. That's really ambitious. And I, I'm rooting for you. Yes. I and really and that's, I think uh, I think it was Vusi Tembekwa who said, you know, we must stop building small businesses. You must literally be ambitious, ambitious in your thinking. And mm. uh, don't solve a small problem, solve a big problem, but then find a way, yeah. a small way of, of, of approaching it. When I was at MEST, mm. when I was at MEST, the problems that the people were solving and the market value, nobody billion fail. And for me, my, my small mind, I just, I was always trying to be conservative. I'm just like, no, it's too ambitious. Mm. And I'm just like, it, it just shows that I'm in a not. small country. Yeah, let me just turn it yeah. down. It was very difficult to promise an investor, no, you're going to get, you know, millions in return. And I'm just like, it's all so too lunchboxy. No one is even buying from lunchbox. But here am I promising an investor from mm -hmm. Norway that I'm going to, you know, mm -hmm. give them 10x investment from the 100k, you know. But then that's when what I realized. What do you think the Torino. challenge is? What do, or no one's really buying from lunch. But what do you think the challenge is? Is it having to train people on how to use the services, or does it really does it have to start from the scratch? Or making people aware that something that you needed to do physically does not need to be done physically anymore. What what do you, what do you think might be a challenge with that? Um, I think. I don't know if I'm going to call it a challenge, but at the end of the day, trust has to be built and you can't build trust in one day, mm. you know? So how do we build trust? One person tries lunchbox, gets a good experience, tells the next friend, the friend tries it, gets a good experience, tell the next person. So we just need a few people to try lunchbox. And then if it works for other people, then people will tell people and then word will just spread. So challenge mm. uh, we should be able to uh, deliver a good experience for our first few customers. Uh, mm -hmm. In Honolulu, the adoption curve, there's always the 20% that will adopt, the early adopters, mm -hmm. the first 20% will use your product, then the early majority will be like the 40%, and then the late majority, and then the laggards. 
So mm. we as, as Lunchbox, we just need to find creative ways of building trust, especially mm -hmm. with, with the first few users, because other people are like, yeah, yeah, Lunchbox, yeah. but the other people that get it. So the question is those that get it, why aren't they using it? You know, maybe mm -hmm. because they've used other delivery services and they've been disappointed. So because they've mm -hmm. been disappointed, you're like, oh, another one, you know? So there's mm -hmm. a whole lot mm -hmm. of um, cycle, cycle, whatever that we need to break, you know? Mm -hmm. and Which I think another interesting thing with the service that you offer is that, so you have um, in uh, in independent companies that you work with, right? So as a as a platform owner, right, you don't have mm. control over the the quality of of the service that someone is going to receive. So if I let's say I order something off a of lunch box from a particular restaurant and I don't like my food, do you think mm. that that impact that you know if I have a negative experience with the pro with consuming the product that you have mm. no you know control over then that might affect my entire experience with the platform itself even though you guys have nothing to do with 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 the actual running of the the restaurants that are listed on your app yes it does affect it because um people don't separate experience like that you know people want mm. a good holistic experience you want to be able to go to, you want to be able to go on the platform and when you search for whatever you want to buy, you want the experience to be good. Um, mm. Once your order is through, you want whoever's following up that order to give you a good experience. Once the mm. food is here, you want whoever's delivering the food to give you a good experience. Once you Absolutely. eat the food, you want to eat nice food. You don't, basically, you want to have a good experience from end to end. And if mm. there is a, if there's a um, dissatisfaction somewhere in the journey, you know, basically your lunchbox, you should find a way to make the experience to be good from end to end. So we sh should have regular conversation with our vendors. So listen, you know, we had a bad experience. People complained about this with your food, so let's fix it. Then we should have a good ex uh, relationship management with our customers and said the experience that you had, we understand um, we're working on it, even that follow up. Because just one bad experience does not necessarily uh drive you away as the customer but how do we as how do we address your negative experience if you had bad mm. food how do we respond to that if mm. how would you tell the lunchbox because Nikki should be in the same way let's say an airbnb would operate like if i have a bad mm. experience being at you know someone's house yeah. would that affect how i feel about the airbnb platform entirely and i think that you're right in saying that sure you know you you guys can also act as an intermediary but i think also figuring out ways that quality control like in terms yeah. of the, the vendors that you that you work with yeah. um and i don't think anyone in the same way like you have to fill out you know multiple applications in order to to to, <clears throat> to be a driver via uber Do it, does that operate yes. the same way with the vendors that you guys work with do you have a vetting um, system or is it one of those as long work. as I can cook a eh? mm. so currently we, we haven't set up a vetting vetting system yet right mm -hmm. because we're still in the process also of customer uh, discovery like who which vendors really need lunchbox you know so mm. it's, it's 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 a it's a tricky place to be in because we we're still trying to discover our vendors as well because some vendors are like no I'm, I'm, I'm good I don't need lunchbox and some people are like mm. man this is a very good idea you know, so we have seen people like uh, Piggly Weekly signing up. We have seen other small mm -hmm. vendors and then we have other big vendors who are not signing up and we're thinking, okay, why does this big vendor sign up and this big vendor does not sign up? You know, mm -hmm. like one of the vendors, no, man, I already have a large following by myself. I'm not going to help build your brand, your <laughs> business. Yeah. So with oh, my wow. Other vendors, I, I appreciate it, the honesty, because I'm just like, okay, yeah. yes, yeah, so Lunchbox is starting out, but we're, we're a platform that has big ambitions, but we're smaller than the vendors that we are helping. You want to work know, with a... It sort of doesn't make sense. But at the mm -hmm. same time, we have to be in the market to understand the problem that the different vendors are having, and then we solve it, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a working progress. It's it's really working progress. There's a usually give philosophy a web combinator, Leon. A web combinator just is go into the market, you know, just experience the problem and then solve it while you're in the market. Well, because yeah, yeah. If we're in the boardroom somewhere, still collecting data, but we're not launching, we are we are launch. It's, go out it's there. Not, yeah, it's not as authentic as knowing for sure. Or okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I, I think another interesting question is for in the Ibile, not just Lesotho, but across Africa, mm. is that a lot of people operate their businesses informally, right? So if you had a platform mm. like Lunchbox, mm. you know Cafe What, we know Piggly Wiggly, we know mm. Mint Lounge, you know, those are formally registered entities. Entities, yes. How, how are we using technology in order to bridge the, the, the info? to integrate rather the informal sector mm. because it's a, it's a it's a huge part of of our mm. economy i think in 2016 kenya alone mm. like 46 percent of their gdp in a little visa which means this is in money that's coming that's flowing from the informal sector that mm. i think is a huge opportunity to also explore um mm. hubani not everyone has a registered company and a, a lot of the deterrence from people who are registered companies is maybe not understanding the, the language, not understanding mm -hmm. the processes, the registration, a lot of the yeah. things are written in English, which mm -hmm. also serves kind of as barriers. So in, in, mm -hmm. in your journey in, in innovation and using you know, technological tools to solve problems, how are mm. we going to bridge that gap between people that are trading informally and kind of bringing mm. them on board to, to formalize um, mm. their, their businesses? I mean, the, the biggest, uh, it, Hans Obua, the biggest barrier to registration, in my opinion, is having a place to work from. You know, and for me, I'm like, is a strategy. So having civil is a strategy, that means I can't register. And if I can't register, then I cannot be formal. And if I cannot be formal, then, you know, so that is, a, in my opinion, that's a regulatory uh, problem, right? Mm -hmm. If we want to register informal, how to informally, how to inform them basically what they're not registered like they don't have documents but yeah they don't have a trade license they uh, we i just decided today or nike local and i that's what i'm doing exactly and how many things are you know but then surprisingly it, there's a lot of income that flows you know Allah. without looking at a single individual if you look at the market uh you know Collectively, how she be left like a stopong, bastopong monana, you know, say, 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 main traffic circle. Mm. Like, that's a lot of economic mm. activity that is happening that has sort of just been boxed out of, you know, formal institutions. That yeah. I think yep. technology is a great opportunity to say, yeah. how do we mm. bridge those two? And like, like we're saying, Besa has mm. been able to kind of bring them on board Hanyane to say, okay, mm. this is an institution how you can bank, you can, yeah. Mm. I think what we also, I mean, sometimes we don't need to even reinvent the wheel. We just need to, there are certain concepts that work. We just need to modernize them and, and use them. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this informal businesses, you know, we call them informal, but they can literally come together and build the, the association. Maybe the register association, and then the association can check out. Okay, we have having a lot of starting breaks and the fruits, right? We have a membership of twenty thousand people that sell fruits mm -hmm. on the street, and so mm -hmm. through, so you know this association. I mean, those vendors through this association, you know, get information. They get whatever trainings, whatever. So he go on your own and go on out like that. You know, so that's not even a tech solution. That's just mm -hmm. okay. This is true. Hey. Just a systematic way of dealing with, yeah, yeah. Of I bridging guess. the gap, of bridging the gap, yeah. you know, and maybe Motemu Lemangana, no more MPs are okay. Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> hey. So when I'm on like a association, how we are all the informal, uh, like people who are operating formally, your, your value proposition must be clear because you're saying I'm starting an association of whatever, whatever people sitting on the streets, join it, mm -hmm. and these are the benefits of joining, blah, 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 blah you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And if people feel like it's best for them to join, they will join and they'll get mm -hmm. the benefits. So I got a bit of it's gonna improve your access to financing, but you don't have capital or whatever. So joining this association will improve whatever. But look at the taxi association. That is the most organized informal sector. You know, have a tiger when I'm call everything shut down. The roads are closed. Yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. Why and other people doing it? You know, everybody mm. should just. So organization is just people, leadership. Everything just rises and falls on leadership. You know, somebody must stand up and bring people together, organize people. People must follow that person, and that person must engage with either the government or other. You know, just stakeholders. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe run out about technology, say? which is simplify the whole processes. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say are some obstacles that you have had to personally overcome in order to fully be operational and create the technological tools that you have created? Mm. Um, tr trust, building trust, first and foremost, with co-founding members. Like mm. if, I, if I approach you and say, let's start a business, you know, one, you don't know me. You, you know, so me building trust with you it's going to be very difficult, especially because um, I mean, building a business is a commitment, you know, because yeah. if you and I are going to be in a business relationship, but then two years down the line, you're like, hey, Nasa Gilesha, yeah. you know, yeah. um, so building trust with your co-founding team is a very difficult thing. I mean, let's, when you look at the, the, the amount of businesses that, you know, team dynamics, people start businesses together and then the relationship becomes sour and then they break up. And then it becomes like we have so many stories. Like, mm -hmm. well, I, if we can ask people to share stories of how their co founding relationships didn't work, it's a common yeah. story. It's yeah. a common story. I think you also know. it's like a conflict resolution yeah. issue because if you look at like other entities, it's not like, it's not like Batawat Kabani, right? Mm -hmm. But I think. Do we as a community yes. and hacking community care about so to like do we do yeah. we have conflict resolution skills okay. to say yeah. that if a relationship goes sour, can we take it back to the base? And Kapo, do we just are we just sort of the people barring hatile, you know, what's the word? When you've offended me or we, or <laughs> we don't agree, then it means that we cannot be on the same team. And I think that's a that's a behavioral, but also like a deeply rooted cultural thing that we need to deal with to say conflict yeah. is okay. Um, yeah. It happens in every single relationship, whether it's romantic, whether it's business, whether it's yep. it literally everywhere, but mm. can we find means or strategies to help us deal with conflicts? Because there's so yeah. many businesses, even that were, you know, initiatives that were just so great. And then when you start listening to the stories or now, what happened? Mm. You're like, no, these two people fell out. So it means yeah. that if they fall out, then the entity that they built together ceases to exist. And it's like, yeah. that's not a very sustainable way of, of running a business. It's not a very mm. sustainable way of trying to build, you know, innovative solutions or even like running a country. Like it, we cannot hinge our development on whether people like each other or not. You don't have to like mm. each other, but can you come to a common or a shared sense of, of mm. development? Mm. I think another thing, I mean, I'm just going to play devil's advocate, you know, just a little bit. When I look mm. at uh, makeup, we have a suit, we are very monolithic culture, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it. But if you go in other diverse places, and when you have, when you're in a room of diversity, the people that, kind of going with it, just form strong relations. We're like, okay, so to America, you know, so we Yay. form strong relationships. We are, Yay. I mean, if you look at the, the makeup of the American um, market, like Jews will come together and form a very, you know, secular, but the Jewish economy, then there'll be the Irish economy. And and not the to Asian. say that people, yeah. and the Asian economy, not, not to say that yeah. people are building all of those things. It's just that, I don't know. It, it, I'm just analyzing. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. So, Mona, now, okay, we don't have like Basia economy, Mokwena economy, you know, Rebasu, Tuan Kabana, Kabani. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm just trying to have an objective way of saying what is wrong. Why can't we deal with yeah. conflict? Why can't we start things? And yeah. yeah. But Hamid is a very successful story of a group of us who yes. came together and built something. Yes. You know? So yes. it is possible. Yeah. It's very possible. Yeah. And, and we're looking Hamid's to enrich as well. Sorry. Uh, enrich supermarket. Yes. We're looking yes. to them as well as a as a it's model of how things hundred. should be. 100%. So I think things are changing. It's just that they're changing at a slow rate, but things mm. are changing. So hopefully in the next 10 years, Basoto will be able to build ventures. Or maybe there are people that are out there, but Harabati, because we don't know the success stories, we only hear the stories of people that fail. So where yeah. do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? Um, well, for me, I, I'm an engineer and I'm an entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. And it was very difficult for me to be to be both in this country, um, mm. you know. Really, it's like Google about about technical, especially software engineers. Like I just, my heart bleeds for them because one, they're misplaced. You know, you're an engineer hired somewhere else, and you're not even doing engineering. You're doing something else. You know, because you, well, you have to survive. And you know, and that misplacement, I don't like it. I think engineers should work. Um, at an engineering agency and the reason mm. why they should work at an engineering agency because engineering is not a team I mean it's a team sport you know so mm. when you have other engineers around you when you struggle with something you're able to ask guys I'm working on this project for this client this thing and some goodies and then another engineer will help you you know mm. but mm. when you are working as, as uh, under some engineering department of one company the four failure and you are also go like well you can always go online on stack overflow but it's very impersonal so it just mm. makes people that are isolated that by me cheating fail when they struggle they find answers online but at an agency mm. when you struggle you literally find help Other across brainstorm with yeah yeah yes. so in the next five to ten years i hope to build a software engineer i hope technify becomes a successful uh software engineering agency where developers can find a home and they can mm build their skills, uh, you know, and they can learn from one another. And then, yeah, companies, if you want a software, instead of hiring people and putting them at your company, because they think how about that our house software and what are you going to do with them, you know? So mm. please let us have an agency so that companies interact with an agency and then the developers can also have a good experience in this engineering whatnot. And then we'll also have, you know, people who outsource clients internationally so that we also build uh, a, a, a talent pool that is in demand internationally, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think MEST really changed my mind. It's very possible to build world-class developers because, mm -hmm. well, the information, world-class information is accessible online. So we just yeah. need to give, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm pretty, we have talented developers in the country that can literally build world-class software, but there's that gap. How do we get uh, Trey to work on, I mean, to, to, to join the Netflix engineering team, you know? Mm -hmm. We literally just need to understand how do we do that. And then once you like, no, Trey just needs to understand uh, to work on Netflix, you need to be at this level to get the next level. You need to be recommended by Andela to go into the Andela program. You have to have this thing. So if we build, mm -hmm. practically build that pipeline, what like Allah Technify, Allah Technify, who is say Andela, Andela, Netflix, I have the engineer in Africa, you do Andela, boom, you started, you started working at Technify, 10 years later, you're on the Netflix engineering team, and yeah. it was deliberate, we built a pipeline, a shop. Nice, that's very, it seems very practical and takes us back to our conversation about having enough spaces that can be conducive for developers to just exist. Like people should just, you know, my, one of my, my, um, my dreams, and I guess soon becoming a reality with the Yali um, Leadership Innovation Hub is having IMAX mm -hmm. available mm -hmm. for our users so that, you know, people can code, people can learn how mm -hmm. to code. Mm -hmm. And people can come in and have access to free, unkept internet, um, mm -hmm. and you know, build what they want to build, and mm -hmm. solve the problems that they, you know, 
that they experience mm. in their communities and mm. also have these kinds of spaces available across the country. So it's mm. available for people that have access, mm. you know, to, 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 to the capital city, but something that can be, you know, spread out throughout the country. So I appreciate how deliberate your, your, your company is in, in making I mean, sure that that pipeline exists. I mean, Leonard, you know, yeah, distribution. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of distribution. I'm a fan of centralization. Um, mm. If you look at America, tech talent is all Ile San Francisco yeah. Gulf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so if people yeah. need to move from Putin to Maseru because you're an engineer, please do. Yeah. That's the like Putin. Hey, yeah. you know, like I said, if, if you join the community and you're very good, we'll, we need to find a way of, 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 of helping these people come here and doing this. Mm. Yeah, because um, when you, once you start thinking distribution, the logistics of building multiple places, whatever, you're making the project That's too big of, and you yeah. won't start. So if you start mm -hmm. in Maseru, but we want mm -hmm. people from different places to, to, you know, to come and be a part of it, whatever, then throw in accommodation as part of the package. So if you don't have accommodation, we'll, we'll throw Maybe in accommodation. As, that's yeah. what MEST did. MEST picked me up mm -hmm. from Lesotho. They gave me accommodation in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Instead of them mm -hmm. building an office in Lesotho, you know, in so Lesotho. this to be. Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then do you have any final words, uh, maybe to inspire people that are thinking of going into technology, people that are thinking of building products, people that have maybe built something in Zebiti Computer Nyabon? What mm. what would you say to those to those members of our audience? Um one, this is really not an individual sport, it's a team sport. So whatever you're building, whatever you're doing, don't do it by yourself, please. Mm. Like there's a whole lot of there's, there's a bigger world out there you know so don't do it by yourself when we gave him one or no just you know let's come together as the co as the tech community let's do hackathons let's do meetups let's do you know like yeah just don't do it by yourself and computer science or programming is not as difficult as people make it, make it out to be you know it's mm -hmm. difficult how long more you know but if you have a support mm -hmm. house or call i feel like no i'm trying to sort uh, this array, but I, for some reason, I don't know how to sort an array. There's somebody who knows. So you just ask them mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. and that's how software engineering works. You, you struggle, you ask a forum and someone on the forum will explain it to you because, yeah, um, yeah, the reason why we don't understand certain things is kind of going to get perspective on how we're looking at the problem and how, you know, so if somebody shows you a different way to look at the problem of man, oh snap, this is actually easy. I always thought it was hard because I was approaching it this way, you know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. don't be mm -hmm. by yourself and tech people are very isolated because they just. I was about to ask if you guys are receptive of <laughs> Of people that are like, hey, can we hang out? And you know, no, we're not, and we need to change. <laughs> we're not, and we need to change. I know so many. It's because sometimes you know, because really, we're trying to have a normal conversation with you guys, and then you look guys look at as weird, and we're just like, I feel like just you know, it's it's just that difference between, um, I don't know, culture, whatever. I don't know what it is, but technical yeah. people are just sort of like a different. They like breed. isolating. Yeah. 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 But we we'll, I think we will solve Work it. Work we'll on it. it. I think yeah. Yeah. And of course I encourage the women to join uh tech. You know, women please go into tech, build something because there's a whole lot of solutions that I mean a whole lot of problems that can be solved by women for women. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. things that wouldn't come across, you know. I don't know what pregnant women are going through. Maybe there's an app that can help. I don't know yeah. what women who are pregnant with their second children because they have you know, second babies different, different from different, uh, Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think one of the things that fascinates me is when you look at a, at a business that's owned by a female, but maybe their website was created by a male. So you can kind of see the disconnect with the UX, UI, but the, the platform looks very masculine. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So we really need more women in the space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this was such an insightful conversation. Um, yes, I look forward to engaging on these issues more. Um, the show will, will have multiple opportunities we maybe even meet some of your team members and have discussions mm -hmm. about what it is that you guys are doing, the type of support that you need, um, and you know, kind of opening up the space a little bit more so people can understand who it is. It's, it's attainable. Mm -hmm. It's attainable to, to, to be engaged in the technological space. Mm -hmm. It's also attainable to innovate um, for people that are scared, um, mm. when I, more twice yeah. in, this is what I created. I created this in Kenya. I created this in Ghana. Now I'm creating this in Lesotho. It becomes more tangible. Mm. And I think these are the sort of experiences that people need to hear more yeah. of. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to our audience yes. for tuning in. And Thank you so um, much for having me. Most, most welcome. And bye, everyone. See you next time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to visit lunchbox lunchboxls.com, order food from your favorite joints. Um, yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Thank you, Kato. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.